Hello again. Um, after a couple of weeks of vacation, I'm back to recording some of these. If you recall from our last uh, episode, we talked to uh, Stefan about uh, Podman Desktop and specifically around Podman Desktop AI Lab. Um, during that session, we uh, mentioned that we're using AI Lab recipes as the tools for um, launching and how we can figure and show that example programs that people can build their own AI apps on, on top of Podman Desktop. Um, today, we're going to dig deeper into AI Lab recipes, and I'm thrilled to have a guest, uh, Sally O'Malley. Sally uh, was an intern of mine a few years ago, and she's gone on to become a, a principal software engineer in Red Hat inside of the Emergent Technologies organization. So uh, welcome, Sally. Hey. Hi, Sally. Uh, so Sally's going to, we're going to talk today about AI Lab Recipes. So uh, why don't you uh, start introducing us to this uh, great re repository? Sure. Uh, it's it's going to depend on a few things you've already talked about. Uh, the Podman AI Lab that um, Stefan showed last session, and then also the System D stuff that you talked to Egal about. Um, so just letting viewers know they can go look at those too. So I guess we'll start out by just looking at the repository. Sound good? Sounds great. So AI Lab Recipes um, started uh, with the need to uh, populate the Podman Desktop AI Lab um, extension with some sample applications. So it actually started with Michael Clifford and myself. Michael Clifford is a data science scientist that I work with uh, at Red Hat, and uh, so we we looked at. Uh, some of the chatbots out there that you could deploy locally, and they basically all consist of three things, a model, a model server, and then some sort of front end. We just started playing around with a few sample applications. We started with, obviously, just the chatbot. And from that grew this modular, um, uh, this modular repository of sample applications that populates Podman Desktop Extension. So um, that is how this repository started, and it has grown and evolved from there. But we're going to focus mostly on those recipes and where the sample apps live. And this, this repository is GitHub Containers AI Lab Recipes. Yes. Awesome. So when you go into the recipes directory, um, you can see there are these different themes or types of applications. Um, there's audio to text, uh, computer vision, multimodal. The one that, that we have been focusing on and will focus on here is the one that is most familiar, I'd say, to everybody, and it's the natural language processing. We have a lot of examples for sample applications um, that use natural language processing, like a chatbot, a code generating chatbot, <laughs> um, a retrieval augmented generation rag application, a text summarizer. So um, let's take a look at one in particular. Sound good? Great. All right, cool. So this is the code gen application. Uh, keep in mind that when you go back, every one of these applications kind of has the same um, structure. This is very modular. So the application itself, there's a container file and the Python script to um, actually do the stuff. It gives you it. It gives you the inference endpoint, and um, and an endpoint for where to interact with the model. So this is basically just the example program that if I was building my own AI app into my uh, existing tool, I could cut and paste this code and and use it for building yeah. building a chatbot or in this case a code generation tool. Yeah, and it's a really great starting starting point for any of these applications. Um, and looking at the container file here, it just containerizes the that script, that Python script that exposes the port um, where you can interact with the model. And you might be wondering what what how, what is serving the model? This is the front end. This and and they all use this streamlet because it's a very well known front end for AI applications. But to see um, how that front end interacts with the model and the model server. Uh, we can take a look at the pod YAML. Each of these sample applications runs as a pod. Uh, you can run it as a pod using Podman Cube Play, which I'll show you in a minute, 
or you can um, you know, upgrade that to a Kubernetes environment. But uh, a few sessions ago, they talked about quadlets. And for these sample applications, each quadlet has a YAML file to run um, Podman cube play managed by systemd. Hopefully that all made sense to you. Um, so, so inside of the quadlet, inside of the kube YAML, we're going to define the model, the model server, and the application that's going to, so they'll all be run simultaneously underneath a Kubernetes environment. In this case, it's running under Podman, but you could put this under Kubernetes too, right? Yeah, exactly. And this is actually a pretty interesting file. So I want to just talk about it a little bit because there were, we, we discussed and um, came up with the best way to, to um, include the model in this pod. And you can see here, we're using an init container and uh, we have a containerized model. It's almost like a, like a scratch image with just the model file, the GGUF file in there. And it's mounted and shared with the model server. Um, so here are the main containers. There is the um, inference application and then um, there is the, where's the model server? Right here, the code gen model service. So what, what model service do all of these applications use? That is a good question. So yeah, let me, let me show you uh, where the models and the model servers live in this repository. The models actually live in hugging face for the most part. We use all models that are, um, have the open source license, uh, I think Apache 2 or MIT. Uh, if you go back to the main uh, root of the repository, there's model servers directory. And the one that by default we always use is Islama CPP Python. But there are many others that that we've played around with and uh, in theory and in in practice, because we test them, um, you can plug any one of these model servers into that pod YAML. But by default, you'll see that they're all using Llama CPP. And you can see if you go into each model server, then there's um, different formats for different hardware specifications. Um, I won't go too far into that. Do you want, should I show? So this, but yeah. how, how would I pick with, you know, in the Podman desktop AI example, it looked like you could easily switch out the models that you would run underneath each one of these model servers. So if I wanted to move from Granite to Llama or uh, one of those, how, where is those listed? Yeah. Uh, so I just switched into the models directory. There's, we were in the model servers. Here's the models directory. Um, geez, as we're explaining it, I'm realizing how much awesome stuff is in this AI lab recipes. It's hard to show it all in a few minutes, but each, um, it, you can, you can easily download the model and there's granite, Merlinite, Mistral. You can see these, um, with make commands. So I remember Dan, when we first created this repo, and you and I started, you did most of the make commands, but we started just like throwing all these make commands together. It was awesome. And I can't believe where it's at now. Super cool. Do you remember that? Yep. No, that was... <laughs> so here's here's um, the make file for, you can look for yourself, just dig into this repo and check it all out. But um, there's all of these different make commands for different, uh, to make it easy to download the models. And the idea is you can look at, at the, at the Quadlet YAMLs files and just customize them however you want, or you can go and build your own. Um, that's what this repository is for, is to just give you like a template or a cookie cutter for how you can create your own AI application. So when, when we were demonstrating last week, a couple of weeks ago in Podman Desktop, the AI, one of the things they did um, is he fired up a, um, a service to be able to uh, start running the chatbot against, um, and that was using this code underneath the covers to actually launch mm -hmm. the model server, and he was able to swap out the models and things, but he's basically using all of the code that's provided in this um, repository, and when, when you're looking at example programs that you're playing with, that's all in this repository. So the really cool thing is going forward uh, in the Podman desktop talk, uh, we talked about, you know, future models and future tools that are going to be showing up. And those are all going to come from this library. Now, I think we've shown 
in this this repository that there's lots of examples that aren't currently in Podman Desktop and they're being worked on yeah. and made made graphically available. Correct. Yeah, there. That's that's what I wanted to make clear is that there's a lot of a lot of features in this repository that are sort of hard to find. Um, you you have to like dig in and, and find them. Document documentation isn't as good as it could be. Um, so yeah, and eventually it, it should all um, get included in Podman Desktop in theory. Yeah. yeah, and I mean the great great thing there is uh, since this is a fully open source project. If anybody wants to come and and if you have expertise in documentation, we'd love to have pull requests against AI lab recipes to improve the documentation. Um, but it also, if you're you are an AI expert, and I am by far not one, uh, it'd be great to have uh, more contributors coming in, looking at these, figuring out which models we should add, uh, which tools we should add to it, and um, and then add and get your own recipes to it. And those recipes could you know eventually show up inside of Podman Desktop. Um, yeah, so. Yeah. I, I just want to add, um, that's the thing, is that uh, I'm not a data scientist, and uh, but the data scientists didn't really know anything about how to deploy the applications, how to put the app together in a pod, or even what a pod pod was for the most part, or container files. So we we have to come together like as communities, data scientists and you know cloud native people, or whatever you want to call them. We have to come together and and actually figure out the best way to um, deploy everything. And that's what's happening now. Even go a step further, we have graphical user designers and tools who are actually building the graphical tools, which also both of us are not. So we're just operating system engineers. We build containers. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you've finished you know, showing us some of the code. Let's let's see this thing in action. Um, how how would I you know, go in and actually start up one of these model servers and actually start running one of the applications? Yeah, I, I want to show you a few commands that make playing with this repository um, easy. So we talked about those quadlet files, and when you when you run the command make quadlet, uh, you get the three systemd um, the three files that are necessary to create the systemd service. So those would be um, those would be the chat the image file, the cube file and the YAML file. So the image and the cube are specific to systemd, um, but the YAML file is just that generic pod definition that I showed you earlier. Yeah, so you're now in the chatbot directory. Could you Oh, that? great, yeah, yeah. So um, in order to play with any of these, and you would go, you would CD into the AI lab recipes, natural language processing, and then here I'm using chatbot. I could have just as easily used CodeGen or the RAG app. Yep. So yes. And then once you're inside any of the uh, directories, you can run make quadlet. And what you'll have is a pod definition. And if you haven't played with Podman Cube Play, I encourage you to do so because it's it's a really great tool. So let's um, just run Podman Cube Play, and it you pass the um, you pass the pod definition, and let's see what happens. Now I ran this earlier, so the images should be pre pulled. Pre pulled. It shouldn't take too long. But if you remember that pod definition, um, it will expose the port, and you should expect a couple of containers. And um, that is exactly what we have. And so you can then go to the browser and do localhost 8501. And here you have your application. Now okay. it's- Very cool. Yeah, is it gonna be super fast? No, but if you're developing a, a, an AI application, um, it's a good way to test that like things are at least connected and working. You can also beef it up a little bit and um, run it in an AWS instance. Um, I'm going to get ahead of myself here because then we have to start talking about Boot-C and how to embed the systemd service in an, in an operating system image, but maybe we can do that next time. Sure, that sounds good. Yeah. That's... yeah. But, yeah, but, but but if you I, had access to a GPU, you, this would actually perform pretty well. Show us how it performs. Just all right. So, 
So right. this is the web application that we just started, um, and now I see the chat bot, and this is running locally on your system. Yeah, let's ask it a question. <laughs> let's see if it knows you, Dan. Oh, I guess no, not. I'm not. Not famous enough. Ask it who is Dan Wallace from Red Hat. Yeah. There we go. Uh, there we go. Oh, my mother would be very proud. <laughs> Anyways, that, that's pretty cool. And uh, you, which model is this running against? Uh, the, ch <laughs> the chatbot model, um, I believe, is running against um, Granite. Let's okay. double check. Should I double check? Sure. Yeah. So in order to double check, I think the best way would be to look at the images that are on my system. And we have granite. That's okay. the only model on the system, so it must be that one. So everything here is is built on top of containers. It's using um, simple Python applications to run it. Um, we have all the recipes available, and we're using uh, open uh, open source and open models. Um, so this is really cool. Um, it's uh, you know pretty easy for people to use and play with, and. Uh, Perhaps we'll uh, go deeper into this and how you could actually start to deploy those in a later session. But thanks, Sally, for joining me this week. Yeah. And, uh, everybody, we encourage you to come and contribute to uh, GitHub container, GitHub.com containers slash AI lab recipes. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye now.